Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at rebuilding my original gaming PC from 2006. Let's get into it. Back in 2006, after just playing a few hours of The Elder Scrolls Oblivion on my friend's computer, I was hooked. A few months later, I was building my first gaming PC. That was 10 years ago. Coming from a family who only used Macs, I had no idea where to start, and to this day, I can't exactly remember how I landed on the parts I picked. My friends told me to build for AMD since it would be a cheaper system. I got the motherboard on eBay, a few parts from the local PC shop, and the rest off Newegg. A while back, Linus Tech Tips put out a video about rebuilding Linus's old computer, except that it showed nothing on how it played. They couldn't get it working. So over the last week or so, I've rebuilt my 2006 gaming computer to get an idea of what it was like back then. To start off, this computer does have a few parts that aren't the exact same thing I used, but were the closest I could get for a reasonable price on eBay. The CPU of the system is the single core Athlon 64 3200+, running at an overclocked 2.14GHz. My original was on the Socket 754 platform, but this one here is a Socket 939 chip. There are a few minor differences, but essentially it's the same CPU. The motherboard is the Asus A8V. Again, this is a substitution, but is what, from what I can remember, a very similar board to what I had. It features four slots for up to four gigs of DDR RAM, an 8x AGP video card adapter, and two serial ATA ports. Currently, I have a gig of DDR installed, and though DDR used to be really easy to find at the local thrift shop, I couldn't find another gig to upgrade. The power supply I got is a 350 watt piece of junk from the local PC store. And of course, the heart of any gaming rig is the graphics card. I picked up the ATI Radeon X1600 Pro 512 megabyte AGP version. Now my original card was from Sapphire, but since the prices were so close, I was actually able to get this card in the box with all the cables, which is a better option for older PC parts. Building the computer was about as easy as anything modern, except for the fact that nothing worked when I got it. For one thing, the motherboard apparently can't detect serial ATA DVD drives, so I had to buy an IDE to SATA converter to boot the Windows XP install CD. On top of that, I continually got blue screens and drive failures during the install, which is apparently because of the board's issues with SATA. Once I got an old IDE drive cleaned off, the installation actually went really smooth, and was faster than I expected. Surprisingly, drivers are still available online for all the components in my system, and most everything worked well enough out of the box. But okay, blah blah, technical stuff, what about the games? The actual experience of playing games at such low fidelity was jarring at first. I remember this machine being capable of so much more. When I was playing games in 2006, I had no idea what a frame rate was or how CPU bottlenecks caused stutters. At the time, I was just happy I could play Oblivion and mod it. As you can see from this graph, average frame rates of many games I played at the time were close to 30 FPS. But also it's important to show they have pretty bad 1% lows. 1% lows come off as those horrible stutters and slowdowns, so though things were close to 30, there was a lot of jitter, which I'm sure you can see from the footage. 6 out of the 7 games from the 2006 era I tested got average frame rates of over 30 FPS, but only 3 had 1% lows that are in an acceptable range. The CPU intensive nature of Bethesda titles caused the 1% lows on Oblivion and Fallout 3. Games like The Sims 2 and Call of Duty ran very well, and the low frame rates weren't really that noticeable during gameplay. Half-Life 2, Portal, and No One Lives Forever 2 also had totally acceptable performance. I tried out a few quote-unquote modern titles and got some interesting results. For one thing, The Walking Dead Season 1 from 2012 had an average of 69 FPS. It's definitely not a graphically intense game, but it's still surprising that a single core computer from 8 years earlier could play it at that level, and better than many of the games from the PC's era. Terraria, though a simple game from several years ago, ran perfectly fine, and even had decent load times compared to almost every other game. Skyrim and CSGO were predictably terrible, even though I was able to win a CSGO match against easy bots. I tried other games like Stardew Valley, Fallout New Vegas, and Left 4 Dead, but none of them would even start. I'm assuming this has something to do with either the lack of a second core or the AGP video card, but I really can't be sure. So as you can see, this machine won't be playing anything traditionally considered modern, and I know the games I put as modern aren't really at all, but consider that anything beyond DirectX 9 simply won't work. 
So what this really shows is how far even mid-level gaming machines have come in the last 10 years. This computer cost me about $700 in 2006. For $200 less, you could make a machine leagues above this today. It's humbling to play games on my first PC. It truly makes me appreciate things like my widescreen monitor, and makes me feel guilty over my concerns of 20 FPS bottlenecks on my GTX 1070. One may argue that video game consoles and all games have come a long way, but consoles have always been easy to deal with. Using an old, clunky, slow computer has shown me just how much easier PC gaming is today, and definitely makes me see why so many people were put off by building your own PC in the first place. Will I be using this machine much in the future? Probably not. I may try to get some older operating systems working to play some very outdated games, but in general this was just a fun exercise in how far things have come. However, all that being said, I got used to it. I got used to the choppy frame rates and low resolution. The games haven't changed. They're still just as fun as they used to be, and performance doesn't change that. Sometimes it's easy to get obsessed with performance metrics and graphical settings, but all that obsession can take away from the enjoyment we get out of the games. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at my first gaming PC. As always, if you have any questions about the build or benchmarks, drop me a comment. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. Uh, also make sure to hit up my Twitter page. I don't do much on there yet, but uh, hopefully you can go on there and talk to me if you want. I guess that's a thing. Uh, there should be a button somewhere for that. Uh, coming up next week, I'm really not sure what I'm doing. Um, I mistakenly thought the Skyrim remaster was coming out on Tuesday, and it's actually Thursday, so that won't give me enough time to do a video on that. So I might do something on um, some of my thoughts on some recent VR stuff. Uh, so I think that might be my next video, and then the one after that will be on the Skyrim remaster. And then I've still got a Stardew Valley video coming, but... Uh, it's just kind of gotten put on the back burner with this whole project, so hopefully that'll be happening soon. I hope you stick with it, and I'll see you then.